was watching a movie last night with my little girl. And you know, she's only four, just turned four. Y'all, we were at the soccer field the other day and she walked over to me and said to me, Daddy, when can I have a boyfriend? <laughs> oh, oh, it gets better. She says, when can I kiss a boy? I told her, a boyfriend's 17, kissing's 30. You know what I'm saying? Then we're watching this movie last night. My wife had me watching this, this, uh, you know, she likes these women movies. You know what I'm talking about? The, what do you call, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, so we're, I, the ball game's on. I'm wanting to watch, you know, San Antonio play or one of the, one of the college games. And, and instead, you know, just to, you know, to have wife time, you know how it goes, man. You, you know what I'm saying. I'm just waiting for her to fall asleep. You know what I'm saying? Just see, we'll lay down. You watch your movie and wait. And as soon as she falls asleep, doop, gone. Change channel. So I'm waiting. And, and Emily crawls into bed with us. You know, she sneaks in the room and she comes in. She's watching the movie. And this, this girl, uh, her, her boyfriend dies in the movie. And, uh, and her sister, I guess, in the movie gets... The, the, the sister's younger and likes the boy, but the boy likes the older sister and has a relationship with the older sister. And the younger sister finds out about it. And my little girl is laying in bed. She, she looks over and she says, you know, she just needs to get her another boyfriend. Now, this is a four-year-old we're talking about. Y'all got to help me out, my little girl. I mean, I thought they started young, but four? Lord Almighty. Oh, I just thought I'd tell you. I thought that was hilarious. I mean, she just, she, she wanted to know when she could have a boyfriend at four. I'm going to have to lock her up. I'm going to have to put chains on the door. Lord. How y'all doing? I got a, I think a good word for you. Just been thinking about things. I want to talk about some of the things that I think are important. Romans 8, 37. Are you there? Here's what it said. Nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Let's read that together. Read it with me. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That is a positional statement. That is not a desire statement. That is not what you're going to become. That is not speaking of, of the future and the attack. It is a declaration of where you are in Christ. It is your position in Christ. It's who you are in Jesus. Look at somebody and say, this is talking about who you are. You are, God made you more than a conqueror. That's who you are. That's the position. Now, knowing that means this, that no matter what you are going through right now or anything you will ever go through, God has already declared you conqueror. You will not be a conqueror when you win over your challenge. That's why when the, the position that you go into the challenge and the way you address the situation will come from your knowledge of who you are in Jesus. Yes, it may be difficult. Yes, it may be challenging. Yes, it may be confusing. Yes, you may lack knowledge. Yes, you may, you may uh, struggle some. But it should only be from the standpoint of struggling for your victory in, because you are conqueror and your struggle is not with the thing but struggling to overcome and become what God called you to be. Does anybody understand what I just said? You're not coming from the standpoint of a defeated person. I may have to play the game but I already know the outcome. <laughs> Does anybody understand what I just said? You might not shoot the last winning basket. It may be the last shot you take at the last second. But if you already know the outcome, glory to God. 
If you already know that you are conqueror, if you already know you are victor, then what does it matter what you had to go through to get to that moment? Because I'm not headed toward a loss. I'm not headed toward defeat because I know that all things, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. All things work together for the good. <laughs> Finish it for me. I already know. I, that's why the Bible says I have a peace that passes all understanding. Because in the midst of what looks like total defeat, in the midst of what looks like total destruction, I already know. It don't matter what comes. It don't matter what I face. It don't matter what somebody said. It, it doesn't matter what they didn't say. I already know the outcome. I already have the answer. I'm already positioned. I'm already positioned. God made me. When I got born again, God made me conquer. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Now, if I was the devil. Now, I'm not. But if I was the devil. Let's just pretend. Let's, Satan doesn't want you. To know your position. I'd want to bring things into the lives of individuals so that I could cause them to believe that that's not their position. How about this? Satan brings problems and challenges into our lives so that he can separate us from God and his word. Amen. Trying to cause us to think we're failures. He brings things to separate us from God. God's plans. And God's word. Understanding that God's word is where faith comes from. Look at someone and say faith. Comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word. So Satan comes and brings things into our lives to try and separate us from the Word of God. Isn't that the parable of the sower? The thief comes to steal the Word, doesn't he? So the devil comes to steal our position. The devil comes to steal our knowledge of God and the knowledge of God's Word so that we will think failure instead of success. He brings problems to discourage us and to get us to believe that there's no hope. He brings us into challenges where we could be placed in no hope condition, where there'd be no hope. What else does he do? He brings these problems so that he can divert our attention. You know, it only takes a second of diverted attention for a greyhound to lose a race. That's why they got the little rabbit on the chain. And they put blinders on the rabbit so that the rabbit doesn't go like this, or so the dog don't look like that. Because that look will change everything. You know, a race is one. If you ran a relay, that the race in a, a relay is won by lack of distraction. It's not one. See, that's why they have to learn to pass the baton with, without ever looking. Because if their eyes are ever diverted. Do you know that in horse races, they put blinders on horses? Why do you think they do that? Because they can become diverted. Their attentions can become diverted. I remember years ago, a young lady in the church, she knows who she is, but I remember I saw her struggling. I watched the challenges going on in her life, and I watched, you know, decision-making process and all those things, and I had the Lord speak to me. I was praying one night, and I heard the Lord. The Lord said, go tell her she's listening to too many voices. She's listening to too many voices. I want to say this to you guys as a church. Distractions come from too many voices. Sometimes you got to put on some blinders. You got this one speaking in this ear. You got this one speaking in this ear. You got this doctrine in this ear. You got this teaching in this ear. You got this feeling about this in this ear. You got, you know what? You're going to get messed up. You're going to get diverted. You're going to get distracted. And it'll be a work of the enemy to distract you from the plan of God in your life. Family. Oh, Lord, I ain't ready for that one yet. 
Let me tell you what else. Satan wants to separate you from your successful position as conqueror. He wants to separate you from this position. He wants to divert you. He wants to get you separated. What else? You have to understand that your current condition, whatever your current condition is, has absolutely nothing to do with your position in Christ. Your condition, your situation, your challenge has nothing to do with you conquering or you as conqueror. What else? You must know that God has already said that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are over and not under and above only. That's who you are. That's your position. Your current condition has nothing to do with what God has already declared over your life. You must know that God has already said that you are the head, not the tail, above, not beneath, over, not under, above only. God has already said you are successful, blessed, and a conqueror and a winner. God has already said I mean, then when God said it, that settles it. That's right. God has already said, think about this now, this is who you are. God has already said, in Christ, this is who you are. You are successful, blessed, more than a conqueror, and a winner. Already declared over you, already said. What the devil does is creates hardships in your life to test your faith and character. He places in your life difficult situations so, so that you will look to something other than God's word. Those include your senses. He puts pressure on you so that you can think of your answers, your solutions, and what you will do. How you will get out of this instead of how God will get you out. He tries to distance you from God's covenant promises with you by using relationships. Come on now. How many of you ever had a relationship in your life distract you? What else? He tries to distance you from God's covenant promises by using sickness and health challenges. He tries to do that by draining your energy and your finances using those. How many of you have had sicknesses and health challenges and relational issues, relationships that drained your finances and drained your health? Have you ever had that? He uses family and loved ones and their bad decisions to mess you up. I've seen more people claim their children's, their, their, their uncles, their aunts, their mothers, claim their problems for themselves and work so hard. Be depressed, discouraged, upset, frustrated, and hurt over something didn't even, had nothing, bad decisions somebody else made. <laughs> I just don't know about my aunt. I'm just so tore up about my aunt. She just got me in turmoil. I just don't know what I'm going to do about my aunt. I'll tell you what y'all do. Leave her alone. Sometimes you just got to let them go. You're not responsible for everybody's bad choice. It will drain and sap your life. Parents, I love you, but listen to me. When you raise them, I'm doing this now. I'm raising them. I got little ones. But I realized very quickly at four years old, one day Emily is going to have a boyfriend. <laughs> I'm not too excited about that. But there ain't a thing I can do about it. I can only train them up while they're a child, and when they grow old, they will not depart from it. At some point, you've got to stop bottle feeding your children.
At some point, you got to let them go. You got to let them have a life. You got to release them to the world and trust the God who is more than enough. You got to stop harboring and carrying the problems and worrying about whether or not they're going to die at night. There's some people that they stay at home in fear all night long, worrying about their son that might be out there doing some crazy stuff and he might get killed. It ain't your problem. I know it would be terrible. I know it would be horrific. But you can't, you, you can't ride your life like that. You can't stay in those kinds of turmoils. You can't go there. The Bible says, cast your cares. I'm preaching real, 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 real good. He said, cast your cares on me for I care for you. you got to release that thing you got to give that thing over. you got to turn it loose and put it in God's hands and trust that God, who is almighty, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, glory to God, above all. Stop nursing your problem. Let it go. Walk away. Shut the door. Too many people leave the open door and the open window and hope that the flies don't fly in. I can't stop the birds from flying over my head, but I sure can't stop them from building a nest in my head. We got to get free from some of this stuff. The devil brings this stuff and toys with us and pulls us into this mess so that he can convince us or somehow d d deflate us or d d d detract us or deter us from who we are in God. I'm a conqueror in God. That's who I am. I'm not going to become one. I am one. Glory to God. Who? Who? I am a champion. I'm a winner. I'm blessed. That's who I am. Oh, you may look at me now. You might see the mosquito beater that I'm driving right now. My tires might be bald and they might be singing when I drive up to the church. I might have holes in my shoes. I remember the day when I stood on an altar just like this. And I had holes in the bottom of my shoes. Because I couldn't buy any more shoes. And when they'd lay hands on me, I'd, I'd fall down with my knees in the air. So that my feet didn't come up off the floor. I didn't know, want nobody to see the holes. I'd go to church with holes in my shoes and when I walk in it'd be raining and my socks would be wet. I'd sit the whole service with wet socks. You may look at me today and I might not be wearing what I should be wearing. I might not look like I, but somewhere down the road, God declared over me and he said, he's not gonna say it, he already said it. I, I am. I am a champion. I am more than a conqueror. I got news for the devil. Don't you come bringing none of that junk in my house. Some of y'all be talking about the devil's in my house. Devil's in my house. What are you talking about the devil's in your house? You say your family's in there. I got the devil in my house. Get him out. Get him out your house. You ain't got to let the devil in your house. At least charge that joker rent. Let him stay up in your house. Let him stay up in your house. He's in my house. He ain't in my house. He's not allowed in my house. Get out my house. Satan. The blood of Jesus is against you. Ah! Glory to God. You don't stay in my body. You don't stay in my mind. You don't stay in my money. Satan, the blood of Jesus ah! is against you. That's who I am. That's 
who I am more than a God. I ain't some lowly worm. No, sir. I'm more. More. Financial storms. Satan wants you to focus on lack. Satan wants to block your blessing. I found something out. I, I found this out. I have come to the conclusion that it's not my location that makes me blessed. It's not my job. It's not where I move. I found out it's my faith. I found out I don't have to go nowhere to get God's blessing. Where I am, God blessed. Because God didn't declare Utah blessed. God didn't declare Chicago blessed. He didn't declare Miami blessed. He declared, he declared me. <laughs> they may only be one millionaire in Florence when this is over with, but I guarantee it's going to be me. The job may move, but God didn't move. The income may stop, but God's money will never quit. God is able to make all grace abound towards me that I can have all sufficient. I don't have to go somewhere to get blessed. I am blessed. I don't move into conquered. I am conquered. I am the conqueror. We got to be careful because sometimes we get the devil gets us into these financial storms. He gets us into this stuff and he causes us to stop realizing that the word is nigh thee even in our mouth, which is the word of faith which we preach. Listen to this. Satan knows the word. He will distract you from the word so that he can bring and tell you things different from the word. Resulting in you losing what was given to you. If God gave you that house, then he gave you the money to pay for it. Amen. Let me ask you a question. I got a question for you. You might be sitting here today thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. <sighs> Did he give it to you or not? And if you can tell me God gave it to you, then shut up and get your mouth in gear with God. Get your heart in gear with God. Get on God's side. Speak what God speaks. Oh, oh. Got the box of Kleenex out, wiping the tears. Worried, worried, worried. Oh, I don't know. The job packed up and left. Since when did you serve God for your job? Since when did things have anything to do with your relationship with God and who you are in Christ? I got to thinking about this whole... See, you're not just a conqueror. You are more. The Word of God tells us that we're not just conquerors. We're more than conquerors. And within you lies the power and the ability to stand against anything. Within you is the power and the ability to stand. Maybe you don't want to. Maybe you don't realize it. Nothing you go through will overthrow you when you stand on God's word. Amen. Nothing you go through will overthrow you when you stand on God's word. Let me read this to you. And we know that in all things, God works for the good. We're back in Romans, verse 28. Of those that love him, who've been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of God's son. God already said, you're going to look like Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. He already stated it. 
Oh, man. And those he predestined, he called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he glorified. What then shall we respond to this? If God. Glory to God. If God is for me. If God is for me. If God is for me. Then who can stand against me? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he also not spare you along with him? Graciously give us all things. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen. It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Jesus Christ who died more than that. Who is raised to life. Is at the right hand of God making intercession for us. What? Who? Shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecutions or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sakes we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep for the slaughter. Let me read you two commentaries that I have on verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Not who shall keep Christ from loving us. Let me read that again. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? It does not say who shall separate Christ from loving us. But who or what shall keep us from loving him? This is the true idea of this scripture. The things listed here affect people, not Christ. If we will not permit them to affect our love for Christ, then we are safe from the dangers of them. Didn't say it wouldn't come. It said it wouldn't affect me. Said I ain't changing my mind. I don't care how it come. I got blinders on. I'm not looking off to the side. I'm chasing the rabbit, the word. Does anybody get what I'm trying to say? You can't be distracted. You can't move off of your sight on God. You got to stay on the Lord. You got to look to him. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. That means he'll begin it. He'll finish it. He'll fulfill it. He'll come. He'll bring it to pass. Listen, here's another a note on verse 38. He says this, for I am persuaded, verse 38. Paul explains to us that in view of his doctrine before stated, the one that he says, I will not move no matter what. See, I'm not moving no matter what. Christ already declared his non-movability. I'm the God that never changes. I'm the same yesterday, today. He'll never change. And if he declared you something, you're already that. I'm persuaded, Paul said, and he explains in view of that, before stated, he is personally persuaded that nothing will be able to separate him from his love that he has for God in Christ. Will you allow trouble? Will you allow challenges? Will you allow circumstances and situations to deter you? Will you lack because you have fear? Will you let it affect you? Because it isn't affecting him. When was it that what you possessed caused you to trust and love God? What material thing do you have that, that, you, that, that would ever keep you from your love for the Lord? I mean, you're worried about the loss of this, the loss of that, or the, the this didn't come through, or that didn't come through. How does, that affect, how does that have anything to do? Why does it have anything to do with you raising your hands? <laughs> what does that have to do with a smile on my face? What does that have to do with me laying in bed, swallowing in sorrow? What? What thing can stop me from loving God? What thing can stop me from trusting the Lord? What job 
couldn't persuade me. What is what? <laughs> I'm going to shout if the sky falls. I'm going to dance no matter what my family does. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know.